I'm here to tell you a little bit about my business, but probably more about my journey, so stick with me. Uh, about a year ago, I have two young kids, eight and 10. I was looking, like every parent does, what am I gonna do with my kids for the summer? Uh, every summer I throw them into a sports camp. They're not super excited about it, but they do it. And then last year I was like, well, why don't I find something that they like to do? I know they like playing on their Kindles, or they like playing Minecraft. Why won't I get them something where they can learn to program that, or where they can learn the, the things behind this? Um, and I looked around and everything I found was in Seattle. Um, my kids being under 12 couldn't go and spend the week in Seattle to deal with it. I obviously am not gonna drive them back and forth every day to Seattle. Um, so we didn't do anything that summer. Flash forward to now, and I'm looking at a career change, and I was talking to a friend of mine, Wendy, and she says, how do you feel about working with kids? And I said, well, I love my kids, but um, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. And she's like, well, there's an opportunity to start a STEM franchise. I said, I love STEM. It's right up my alley. That's what I want to do. So that's what we're doing. Now, how did I get here, and why is it important to me? Um, I don't know, as a kid, I was, you know, um, one of my teachers framed it like this. He's smart, but he's no genius, all right? And I think that's good. What I wasn't was challenged. So um, basically from junior high through high school, I feel like I kind of fell out. I was bored. I didn't participate as well as I should have. I never felt challenged. And then I didn't find myself till I went to college. And the only reason I went to college was because you're supposed to, right? So then I got into college and I found what I loved and I loved biology. Um, I became a biochemical, um, I went into biochemistry, graduated, then went into biomedical sciences for my graduate work and I loved it. I found what I loved, but until then, I graduated high school with a 1.5 GPA. If that makes any of you cringe, it should. Um, <laughs> I graduated college with a 3.8. So it's all a matter of finding what you love and doing that and then building that in children so they can do that all the way through. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Challenges I've found in doing this. Well, I'm not from Wenatchee, so um, I have probably met more people in the last month setting up this business than I have in the seven years I've lived here, to be honest. Um, and it's great, and I've had some I'm just uh, incredible support from uh, the Downtown Association, people helping me out with issues with city planning. It's been incredible. But city planning is still an issue. Um, dealing with codes is still an issue. Getting the word out and making sure that what I want to do is still an issue. And then working with the older children is also gonna be an issue. So I bought a franchise and it really focuses on second to probably sixth or seventh grade. Um, I think it's well established. The curriculum's all built well worth the money because that would have taken me years to build that curriculum. Um, so that's great, I think that's good. What I would need to do is I'll have to build a curriculum for the older kids to get them interested. In, and maybe um, what I could use help with is who do I reach out to to maybe get the community involved in this as well. At this point in my life, it's not about what I'm doing, it's more about how I'm involved in the community for me and that's why I'm doing this. It's also why I wanna put it downtown, which is a big focus on what we've been trying to do. Um, well, I'm still not out of time because I feel like I've been up here forever. <laughs> What's that? It feels like 20 minutes already. It does. Um, you have two more. Tell us what STEM is. Oh, sorry. I, that, so if you don't know, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Uh, and my life has covered all of it. Like I told you, I was biology, biomedical sciences. I left grad school and I went to work in the semiconductor industry. So um, I did that for 15 years. And then when I moved to Wenatchee, the only skill I had that really fit the area was um, IT. So I've covered the whole gamut of STEM. Uh, I did a stint as a school director teaching networking in Dallas for two years, which was a good eye opener. Um, It's not a school, it's an after school program. Okay. So we start at three o'clock when schools get out. We 
usually do about 90 minute sessions. They'll be, they'll learn to program robots, they'll learn to build robots, they'll learn um, electrical engineering, flow of electricity, they'll learn um, biology, chemistry. It's a little bit light on the math as we're discovering, but it's also something that we'll be able to do. But math is involved in everything you do with science, technology, engineering. Um, you can't get there without math. It's the bottom language of all of it. I'm really looking forward to meeting you. I'm Diana Hadland. I'm Hi. the uh, Community Relations Director for the Manassas School District. And my job is to work with businesses and get them hooked into our schools. Can you tell me, is there a model with this franchise of how it's partnered with school districts with public schools and how that might work? There is a model. What that model is, I don't know exactly. I do know that um, when I was back in Virginia, they, um, they are going into the schools after school and doing STEM programs for them. And is there any room for the A and growing as the STEAM? That's a big emphasis in our district. So is that part of the franchise or is it strictly just STEM? Currently it's, it's STEM. There's not an art. And I, I understand the importance of art. Um, without the imagination, the science and technology really doesn't mean anything. You can't go forward if you don't have the art and imagination to drive it forward. Um, so is it there now? No. Do I plan on helping the franchise grow? Absolutely. So it's something that I'd be willing to look at. Great. And I look forward to meeting you all. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. It's nice meeting you. I think we have this yeah. Karen first. So I have a comment and a question. The comment is it sounded like you wanted to build a curriculum for other grades and then this other comment about arts and that my, my thought for you is don't do more than what you're doing that the franchise has prepared for you until you really have your ducks in a row and you're doing really well at that because one mistake for a small business is to try, try and do too much too soon and then you'll look stupid. So, Absolutely. Then yeah, right. <laughs> the other question I have, it's not clear for me, um, with the franchise, do you envision yourself being one of the STEM teachers or a business owner who then gets the STEM teachers? Because it's important for you in your head to know that. I plan on getting teachers and being the business owner and working on curriculum development. I will also be in there helping out. Um, I think anybody that's been in a small business or even a large business knows you wear a lot of hats. So I'll be wearing a lot of hats. Yeah. So the curriculum development, it sounds like, is your passion. And I would urge you, as a small business owner for many decades, that you get the small business running before. Absol you You're absolutely right. And I think from what I've seen from the curriculum, it is great for that area. I went, I mean, I only went through a few of the uh, modules, but they were spot on. It's a great program where they read about the science, and then they apply it. Um, which kind of you know double enforces that, and it's a lot of fun for them. I think the reading part isn't their most favorite part, but they have to get through it to get to the fun part. So. We have a question over here. Uh -oh. Did you still have a question? No. Okay. Right. Gentlemen. Going to have a minimum age of students. Kindergarten is the minimum age. I have not, okay. no. So I can help you with that, Diane can help you with that, Stacey okay. can help you with that. To introduce you to Sue Kane, and I don't want her to know thing, but Jenny Rose and Oscar Dean, pretty much. Woo! Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, um, that run the Apple STEM network, it would be a critical group for you to get insight from. Excellent, thank you. So I'll, I'll, I'll do an introduction if you can give me your information. Perfect, I will, yes. Yeah. So officially, welcome to downtown. Oh, thank you. No, you haven't opened. Maybe talk about where you'll be located and why you chose downtown. OK. So well, like I said, I mean, I love the city. Um, I wanted to go downtown because uh, this is going to sound bad. But I, didn't like, I don't like seeing a lot of open storefronts downtown. Uh, I think we have a vibrant downtown area. I think it's it's beautiful and it's great. I think we need to keep businesses going in there and need to keep all the storefronts open. I think my program will fit well downtown because you drop your kids off for 90 minutes, 
you have plenty of time to go shopping or look around downtown, hit Cafe Mela for a cup of coffee or go to the firehouse station, get something for your pets, go to the spa, get a massage, whatever you need to do. It fits well. I think having positive businesses downtown makes the city look good. And that's what that's why it's important to me. <laughs> all right, I'm going to need another 20 minutes here. Um, first of all, I'm a business. I'm not an education center. There's no diploma. There's no um, mandated curriculum. It's basically all per person, how they need, what they need to grow. Um, so they wanted to, one, classify me as an education center, which I'm not. I'm more of a mental exercise facility, a hands-on, learn-to-do-things facility. Um, so with that, our city ordinance doesn't allow education facilities downtown on the main street level. So uh, working with the downtown association and Shiloh, it looks like we're going to be able to get those laws changed, which is, I mean, it's impressive how fast the city moved. You, I couldn't be happier. Um, then the other thing is once they label you as an education center, now they take my full square footage and say, hey, you have room for 138 people, so you have to build out for 138 people. And I'm like, I will never have more than 20 people in my building at a time. It, it doesn't make sense. So I had to fight with them for a long time for them to classify me as a business instead of an education center. Um, and it looks like they're willing to do that. I just have to write a long letter indemnifying them from anything that could happen in my business. Um, Next up, port reform. Sorry. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so these are just some of the... And I haven't even gotten back into the planning stage of this yet, so I don't know how much worse it's going to be. I've spent a lot of time just keeping my nose in the city planning office until they actually help me out with what I need to get helped out with. Um, and it's not that they don't want to help. They do want to help. They are tied by codes that are just asinine in how loosely written and widespread they are, to be honest. It's more of um, you sign up for, usually it's two sessions a week at 90 minutes. Um, so yeah, most of it, there's also an after school where we go and pick up kids after school for parents that are both working or don't have time or just need that time to do other things. We can pick up their kids after school and keep them until they're ready and keep them involved in doing science. Um, so there's both aspects. I know they do a lot of, uh, prompt to day camps on days where schools get out for un snow or you know power outages or anything that they'll step up and hold the kids for parents that can't have them. Sorry, I was like... It's part of my personal plan. I don't know that it's part of the business plan. Um, obviously, our community is 50% Hispanic, so, and reaching them. Now, my business in its current format is sort of geared towards the more affluent. Um, and then as that grows, as I get settled, I would like to make ways to involve everybody in the city. Um, but that's sort of down the road in my planning. We do have summer camps planned. I am currently in the middle of trying to get a location set up, so I'm hoping to be open by July. I'm gonna miss the first two weeks of summer, but hopefully we'll be able to hit the rest of it. And yes, those should be set up uh, within the next couple weeks on the website, and we can start planning those. And sorry, I forgot the first part of your question. It was knees base. I have ideas for that, but I really, I think it'd be helpful if I could find groups um, in the city that are already based on that and then work with them and see what we can do to make it feasible for everybody, to be honest. Would you ever consider um, offering STEM classes to the developmentally disabled community? Well, 
younger and uh, like older. Absolutely. I just, um, yeah, I would, again, I would need somebody to work with me on that one because I don't have any experience with it. But yeah, I, I mean, my goal is to, to make it STEM available for everybody in the community, so. I'll be hiring. I've uh, interviewed one gentleman that will work out, but he will only be here for the summer, which it'll be good for the summer. He was bilingual, which sort of, which is good. Um, but I'll be reaching out to the college, and I mean, my staff will be, in my view, sort of science and engineering college students to help out with the kids that are excited about what they're doing and, and really want to get in there and enrich themselves and the children they're with. So. Don't know. Um, that's one of my problems. That's one of my problems uh, that I needed to probably kind of go over here was I need to make sure that my curriculum is aligned within what the school set because you don't want them too advanced that they're bored in class. You don't, but you want them advanced enough that they're participating and they they feel like they know something that other kids don't know. It makes them feel better about themselves and it will help propel them. Yes. He's moving from zero to one, and he's obviously got a lot of um, challenges but opportunities ahead of him and a lot of excitement. I think that was great, and I know one of the things Otto talked about was, um, in our, our meeting, was getting connected with the right people to review that curriculum to make sure that that's there. So, yeah, Josh. Have you done any sort of um, testing or surveys to gauge the interest level uh, for this program, was that part of your decision to start, or did you just kind of, it was more gut, you talked about it? was more gut. I, I know I'm not the only person in the city that has gone through what I've gone through, I'm sure. Um, so no, I didn't do a lot of surveying. This was pure, we need this, and that was me starting. After getting involved, it seems like I've gotten so much support. It's definitely, I didn't know there was that big of a, a STEM movement in the town, to be honest, and it's been pretty amazing. So. Did I win? <laughs> I got through all the questions. <laughs> Hi. Um, I have a, well, I'm curious about what does the franchise do to, um, you know, the criminal background record thing? I'm assuming that you'll have your employees go through that to make sure that they're not pedophiles or, <laughs> you know, anything like that. Absolutely, uh, yes. So that, and the other thing is the recommendation to have even high school students come in and mentor the younger children if, if you know, you're allowed to. Yeah, absolutely. If I have advanced high school students that want to come in and help with the younger kids, I think that's sort of my, like I said, that's sort of my target employees are, are some of the younger high school, college that are really involved in STEM and more advanced and they want to, to reinforce that and pass that on. Yes? What are the costs associated with the program? Like for just a child to participate? It's a good question because I don't really have that set and a lot of that will be dictated by the franchise. Um, and if I gave you numbers right now, they would actually probably be just what I made up in my head, so I'm probably going to pass on that. I'm sorry. Okay. Absolutely. And I'm sorry we're not working on stem cells, but. We're going to work on the kids that are going to stem cells. All right. Um. 
Yeah, but we're still trying to get them while they're malleable and same, same process just with whole organisms. <laughs> <laughs> going to just make a comment relevant to that, that I believe there's a lot of people in the general community here that really do not have a concept of what STEM, because, you know, those of us who understand that acronym get it, but there's a lot of parents and people who really don't yet, and I think that'll be really important to very clearly define what you actually are offering outside of just the acronym. So as we talk, as you do your social media and advertising, it's an opportunity for you to really bring education to the community. I, I do, uh, but I, I need to be careful as I do that not to limit it to what, because it does, it's such a wide range of things, right? Anywhere from computer programming to robotics to understanding biology and chemistry. Um, and we try to make sure that they get a good base in all of that. Um, and in my head, I have ideas of other things that we will be doing, but I, I until I get through the franchise process and they'll have to okay everything I do sort of thing. But I. It's going to be good. I, I have a good feeling about it. What is the name of your business? STEM Tree. STEM Tree. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I just like to say something. You're a perfect example, in my opinion, of a million cups. You don't have it all figured out. And I think a misconception is when you start a business, you have it all figured out. You never do. Yeah. <laughs> and I just applaud your transparency to say, I don't have it figured out. I have a passion for this enough that you're going to put yourself out there to do this in our community. So I want you to know how cool that is. And Thank also, um, I know you have brochures here, but you also have resources. And Mr. Fletcher in the back is uh, your small business. That there are resources in this community. And knowing those resources, we want to be here to help you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's, you guys have been absolutely amazing, to be honest. Like, um, who are the specific types of people or organizations or whatever that you that you could connect with that would help you get your business off the ground and growing that you have not been able to get? I don't know what I don't know. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I don't know. I don't know the organizations in town. In fact, I've learned about a lot of them starting, but um, and some of those are like uh, Mesa over at the community college. Um, I ran into them at the Earth Day thing at the museum, um, the Downtown Association, and the Chamber of Commerce, which, I mean, I know the Chamber of Commerce is here, but I just never really knew what they did, to be honest. Um, right. so. <laughs> uh, so I don't know what the town has to offer, to be honest. Like I said, I've been here for seven years, and maybe I should, but I've been um, busy doing my life for those seven years and working and uh, kind of just got this bug recently. So. Do you, uh, do you, maybe you still have yet to find this out, but I have this impression that franchises theoretically offer more than just like a curriculum. They would offer a marketing plan and um, other business related startup stuff like your business plan and your marketing plan and your budget and blah, blah, blah. Do they do any of that? No. Uh, <laughs> yes and no. The, the franchise that I'm involved in is relatively new, which has its pluses. Like, I'll be able to contribute, I think, a little bit more. Uh, it has its minuses because um, they don't have a set plan, which is maybe actually, in my opinion, kind of a plus because I have a lot more leeway in what I need to do and get done. Um, so what they did offer for me is, I think, a great name, a set curriculum that is is built so I can get up and off the ground so much faster than if I was doing this all by myself. Um, and a support community so that if I have issues, I can go see what they're doing in Everett, or I can go see what they're doing in Virginia to make things better. And that's really what I'm getting out of the franchise. So a business plan, do you know about that? I do. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I didn't mean to be sarcastic. No, no, no. <laughs> Well, most businesses don't have them, so, well, you know. Well, when I first started in business, I didn't have a business plan, and I took SBA classes and the SCORE thing. I mean, that was many decades ago, but um, those are really helpful for just basic stuff like cash flow and things like that. Absolutely. Being in IT for the last five years gives you a lot of um, exposure to how 
businesses work and run. I do know that it's good to have a budget. I know they almost never hold up. Um, so I think you're better off with a, a loose plan and a rough budget, and you try to stick to it as best you can, but you have to have that flexibility to move around. So do I have a business plan? I absolutely have a business plan. Is it a hard budget written down on an Excel sheet somewhere? It is not. Um, so I, uh, that makes sense. Stacy, so we are at our 20 minutes time. Oh. <laughs> well, it's hard because I start thinking about all the ways you guys already have helped me. Um, but really, it's just, it's, it's kind of up to, I need to get involved in Apple STEM. Uh, these, these are the ideas that I need to know about. These are the things I need with well, Linda, is it not Linda, sorry, Diana. Um, these are the things I need to, to really get out there and get involved. And then my biggest, I guess if what keeps me up at night now is, am I going to get the little bottoms in the seats to, to keep it going?